Hey guys, today we're going over the easiest Frost DK guide to get to 2400 plus in solo shuffles. I was the 5th Frost DK to get above 2400 on the NA servers using this very strategy. Frost Death Knights are capable of huge bursts and sustained pressure through the likes of Pillar of Frost and Chill Streak. The AoE pressure it can create can be so vast that off targets can fall to the damage. Their damage has almost zero ramp up time allowing you to control your burst windows very well. As a Frost DK, you come with incredible crowd control mechanics through your snares, grips, and stuns, allowing teammates to freely set up their goes. With the new Frost DK talent tree, you have a lot of new ways to build. Fatal Fixation and Icebreaker are going to be in my normal build. You can also go Remorseless Winter build, which would be really good into other melee comps if you're going for Pet Cleave. Now Fatal Fixation is a fantastic tool when you're being kited a lot, as you can stack up multiple killing machines for when you catch back up. But it does lose some of its benefits if the target you're hitting won't be kiting you as much like other melees or shadow priests. The reason why is due to never really needing to stack up two in a row, and your crit is so low in PvP that it's very rare that you'll end up overlapping two killing machine procs due to a crit auto attack also giving you a stack. This talent is extremely good in PvE though, as Frost DKs often stack crit, which can cause major overlapping of killing machine procs. It's still nice to have, as when Pillar is ending, you can stack up two killing machine procs right before it ends for continuous burst even after Pillar fades, as you, as you still have everlasting strength. Frostworm's Fury and Absolute Zero are also really nice big AoE stuns for every other go for your team. And this could be really nice especially if you can grip the healer and blind him into a Remorseless Winter stun. And then right out of that, right into a Frostworm stun and into a Silence. That combo is extremely deadly. Inexorable, Assault, and Cold Heart can also be niche choices if you wanted to play outside the meta and try some new talents for fun. Assault is really nice if you're going to be kited often or sitting a lot of CC as you'll always come back with a stronger obliterate hit. Cold Heart can be combined with proliferating chains so it gets double the benefit and combined with bitter chill so you can let it stack to 20 before using it which will allow you to get hits as high as 60k's on two targets at once for 120,000 damage. Shattering Blades is still really good, but you don't want to use it as a two-handed as it takes like one minute to reach full stacks of Razor Ice. Unlike the one-handed build, it, it stacks to five around every eight seconds, giving you much more utility from it. So it's still a must-have for one-handed weapons. Now between two-handed and one-handed, I prefer two-handed at the moment as it does have more controlled burst, but with 10.1 coming around the corner and crit being nerfed in PvP, I do believe one-handers will be the more optimal choice, as burst damage will be a lot less more important over sustained pressure which one-handers excel as with hits with of Frost Strike as high as 150,000. For Death Knight's PvP talents, not much has changed since they killed Spell Warden. My two talents that never really changed are Necrotic Ward to help those big obliterate hits as well as Bitter Chill. This talent is really nice to have with an aggressive DK playstyle, allowing you to have 100% uptime on your chains of ice without wasting globals and ruins on it, as well as reduce the target's haste which is really nice for anyone casting in front of you or an Ellie Shaman that relies on high haste for procs. The third talent is usually the one that's up in the air depending on my team comp and the enemy team. Delirium would be my default favorite for the third choice as I love impairing enemies to slow movement as much as possible, making it extremely aggravating to play against as they won't be used to their movement cooldowns being so long of a cooldown. If the target is immobile, like a Shadow Priest, I'll opt in for another choice like Shroud of Winter if I want to make it harder for the Priest to CC my healer and swap to him, or Dead of Winter for those grips on the healer into a blind into a remorseless winter. Times I don't go dead of winter is if my team already has multiple stuns, if I'm playing with like a rogue and a mistweaver, I would opt into delirium or shroud of winter depending on the class's mobility. Strangulate and death chill are also extremely uh, great choices but I rarely end up using them. Gearing up in 10.0.7, since the new update they increased how much conquest we are getting in rank settings. You can also now buy PvP Conquest boxes for 375 each at the PvP vendor with the requirements that your character must be 1400 rating first. 
This makes gearing incredibly fast and easy now. With some luck, the boxes can now fully gear a tuning conquest in about 10 to 12 hours of gameplay, saving you easily 24 hours of gameplay on an undergear tune, which can be really boring when you're weak. If you happen to have a healer and enjoy playing solo shuffles on them, you can cut this time down in half with all the bonus conquest healers earn in solo shuffles. Going over here to the crafting table in Dragonflight, which now offers you the ability to put in an order and actually get a piece of gear crafted by another player without actually having to interact with them. It just does it automatically through this trading table. And there's two pieces of gear that you're going to be looking for. There's going to be the helmet. And the reason why you're going to want to grab this helmet is it puts up a really nasty damage over time effect whenever you're being targeted by players or even just getting cleaved by players. And then the second piece of gear that you're going to be looking at are the boots. And the reason why is they have a 5% reduction in crowd control. And that doesn't sound like a lot, but that is really nice to have because it's also 424 item level. So you're going to be fully geared even quicker with the trophies of strife and your conquest going up by 550 maximum per week all this is going to add together to you gearing up extremely fast this season and the way for you to craft this gear is you need to finish the thaldrasis zones quest line and you'll start to get an item called sparks of ingenuity and with these sparks of ingenuity you use them to put in these crafting orders to get these really awesome pieces of gear. Now for Frost DK specifically, I happen to be running Adaptation and I'm using the On Use badge so I can do as much damage during my Pillar of Frost go as possible and I actually have it all macroed in together right here. This is just my boom macro. All this is castable in the same global as the only thing that takes a global is going to be your pillar of frost you can use pillar of frost the power rune weapon my orc racial the one minute on use and all this makes for an extremely powerful go as you can see i don't even have unholy rune weapon on my bar right now i'm just using it inside the macro for a really strong go one of the reasons i'll use medallion over at Adapt is if the team has a lot of disarms and they're really annoying during my Pillar of Frost. If you're ever versing a warrior that knows what he's doing and he ever hears your Pillar of Frost activate, he will immediately disarm you knowing that you're going to be doing huge burst and he's going to completely cripple your character. God damn disarm. Look how OP disarm is man, my entire freaking burst is just gone. Other than that, I really don't feel the need to run Trinket too much as a Death Knight since you have so many different ways to get out of CC anyway. I just use Adapt, it's just another thing I don't need to think about, it's just passive. When it comes to Frost DK's stat priority, you're always going to be looking for Strength first, and then Mastery, and then Versatility. Haste is okay to have, but it's not going to be more damage than Mastery this season by a decent amount. Mastery is going to be a lot more damage. The only thing Haste is going to help you is with that fluidity a little bit, making it a little bit more smooth to use your rotation without waiting too long. You're going to want almost zero crit, and the reason why is with the build, we're already getting Killing Machine procs, which will guarantee that your obliterate is going to critical strike anyway. So this is pretty much a useless stat. You want to stack as much mastery and versatility as possible. And for your enchants and gems, I like to go the gem that gives you 70 mastery and 33 versatility. For my cloak, I went regenerative leech. Leech doesn't seem like it's going to be a lot with it only being 3%, but I actually heal a decent amount with leech by the end of it anyway. It's usually around 10% of my healing, which is like, for this one solo shuffle, it did 579,000 healing, which is pretty nice. Over the six rounds, of course. Then for the chest piece, we're going to be looking at sustained strength. For my bracers, we got an extra 200 leech. For my pants, we got frosted armor kit. 
for my boots, we got Watcher's Loam. And for both my rings, I just put 82 plus Mastery to increase my damage of all my Frost even further, which counts for Obliterate too, since it's going to be Frost damage during your Obliterate Killing Machine procs. And for your weapons, you're going to want Rune of Fallen Crusader and Rune of Razor Ice. And the reason why you want Rune of Razor Ice is also because of Avalanche and Shattering Blade. These are going to help you stack Rune of Razor Ice extremely fast so that a lot of your Frost Strikes are going to be 100% additional damage, which is huge damage. Sometimes you're doing 100k plus Frost Strikes. And this actually happens very often. Sometimes I'm getting five stacks of Razor Ice every like eight seconds on the target, which is huge, huge extra burst damage. If you get a Killing Machine proc and you hit 90k, and then you get a Shattering Blade proc, or well not a proc, but if you get a Shattering Blade Consumption and you use all your Razor Ice stacks, your Frost Strike can just do another 100k. It's just really crazy, the damage back to back. All right, now let's go over some of your normal rotation while you're using Frost DK in PvP. You're gonna wanna start off by applying your diseases to the enemy. Then you're gonna use Chains of Ice. Then you're gonna use Remorseless Winter and put down a Death and Decay. Now you're gonna wanna use your runes on Obliterate and use your Runic Power on Frost Strike. Now whenever you get a a uh, rhyme prop, you're going to want to prioritize this unless you have a killing machine prop. You'll always use your killing machine props first. And then what you do from here is you pretty much just use all your runes on Obliterate, then use some Frost Strikes. And what's going to be awesome about using Frost Strike is it also increases the duration of your Chains of Ice. As you can see here, I'm pretty much using Frost Strike, Obliterate, Frost Strike, Obliterate. Putting down my Death and Decay, using Remorseless Winter off cooldown, Frost Strike, Obliterate, using the Howling Blast from the Rhyme proc, using my Killing Machine proc, using my Howling Blast proc, Frost Strike to increase the duration of my Chains of Ice, use some Remorseless Winter, put down my Death and Decay again, and Death and Decay is going to be really awesome during your combination because it is a huge slow, so you're going to be doing a lot of damage and a lot of snare with that that's pretty much what it comes to when you're just doing your normal rotation this is what your damage breakdown may look like one of the reasons why you see obliterate doing such little damage is it's because outside of your cooldowns it really does not do much your frost strike actually does a decent amount more just because of the build that you're going to be running with it increasing every time you have five stacks of razor ice on the target which happens probably every eight seconds if you're on top of the target now if we're talking about your burst rotation you're going to want to do this very efficiently pillar frost does not last long but if you use the globals well you could do tremendous damage during it the burst is a frost decay you're going to want to start off with your raise dead and then you're going to want to activate your abomination limb then you're going to want to run in use howling blast put down your death and decay use your pillar of frost macro with your unholy rune weapon then use chill streak at the same time and then every time you have a killing machine proc you're going to want to always use your obliterate first and then if you don't have a killing machine proc, what you're going to do is use your Frost Strike or Howling Blast to proc another one. And you're just going to keep basically doing that over and over again. One of the reasons why you want to use Raise Dead, A-Bomb Limb, Remorseless Winter, and Death and Decay before you use Pillar of Frost is because during Pillar of Frost, the only three moves you want to be using is obliterate when you have a killing machine proc and if you don't have a killing machine proc what you're going to do is howling blast if you have a rhyme proc and if you don't have a rhyme proc you're just going to frost strike and howling blast and frost strike is going to make your next obliterate automatically crit with magic damage by activating a killing machine proc and you're just going to keep doing that over and over again so you're going to have Remorseless up, Death and Decay down, 
you're gonna put out your uh, pillar of frost, you're gonna use your chill streak, and then you're just gonna obliterate, howling blast, obliterate, howling blast, obliterate, frost strike, obliterate. You'll have these goes pretty often because pillar of frost is a really short cooldown with it being reduced with this ability right over here where every time you get a critical strike, it reduces it by two seconds of frost strike and obliterate so your goes happen basically every 45 seconds which is really nice because that's in between defensive cooldowns usually and things like trinkets here's a look of everything in action all at once summon pet a bomb limb put down death and decay remorseless winter Use Pillar Frost into Chill Streak, Howling Blast for Killing Machine proc. Use Obliterate with the Killing Machine proc. Use Frost Strike to get another one. Use Howling Blast to get another one. Use the Killing Machine proc. Use Frost Strike. Use Killing Machine proc. You put down another Death and Decay, Killing Machine. Use your Howling Blast proc. And just hit a lot of Obliterates while your Death and Decay is down. And you're going to be doing huge damage. As you can see down here, 100,000 just on these dummies right here. Frost is great at putting out immense AoE pressure during their very short cooldown. Alright, and now for Frost DK's defenses. DK's have some of the best defenses in game with Anti-Magic Shell, Lichborn, Icebound Fortitude, as well as just simply kiting the enemy with Chains of Ice and Death and Decay. Our Anti-Magic Shell, which is our bread and butter, is a low cooldown huge defensive ability that stops all magic damage and crowd control effects as well as prevents magic dots from being applied to you. This is a great spell to combine with Lichborn to further increase how much it will absorb on you making it even harder to pop and making you that much more tanky during times of great burst like a ret using his wings. Lichborn with the build we're going today is an incredible tool to have to decrease all the damage taken from magic and physical by 15% for 12 seconds, which is a really long defense to have, not only that, but if you're not being trained you can also use it to break out of fears to help your teammates by being the snare god you are as a frost death knight. Alright, and now to Icebound Fortitude. It gets you out of any sun and makes you immune to them for the next 8 seconds as well as reduces all damage on you by 30%. And now since Icebound is your way to get out of stuns, you won't want to use this purely for the damage reduction in most situations. You want to save this for a huge stun. And mostly in solo shuffles, that's going to be the first stun right off the bat when everyone blows their huge cooldowns on you. You can also combine this with Anti-Magic Shell and you'll be close to unkillable when it comes to magic damage. And now when it comes to Death's Advance, this is a fantastic defensive tool. It's a speed increase as well as an immunity to pull and push mechanics like another Death Knight's Death Grip or an Ellie Shaman's Thunderstorm. So when trying to get away, you can use Chains of Ice paired with Death's Advance to easily make big gaps. When it comes to crowd control, as a Frost DK, I always recommend before bursting to grip in the healer into an asphyxiate and then putting your death and decay on everyone for a 90% slow and then starting the burst rotation I have noted in chapter 6. One of our main crowd control abilities is going to be asphyxiate. It's great to use before or after burst to create pressure. If a class is disarming you during your burst, you can also save this stun for him to protect your burst as both asphyxiate and your pillar frost are going to be around similar cooldowns. For death grip, you're going to want to use this as a ranged interrupt on the healer to get him out of a safe area so he's not just spamming heals. Combine a grip on the healer with the chains of ice to create further pressure and make him even more uncomfortable in the situation he's in. Now when it comes to mind freeze, you have a 15 yard range on this kick so you can catch healers off guard very easily with this especially since you're gripping them often into a chains of ice putting them in very hard locations to cast while in front of you. Another one of your strong crowd control effects is going to be Abomination Limb. This can be used after gripping in a healer to make sure he's gripped in a second time to extend the pressure and put him further away from where he wants to be. Now for Chains of Ice, it's one of your strongest slows as well as you can apply two of them at the same time. So you're always going to want to keep your main targeted chains the entire game 
as it also reduces their haste by 8% and gets refreshed by Frost Strike. So you can have up Chains of Ice on some players forever, especially players like Shadow Priests and Ellie Shamans, where their only way to get out of it is using a Fade or getting a Freedom from a Paladin. Now when it comes to Death and Decay, it's not only a strong tool to do burst because your obliterate won't be able to hit two targets, but it's also going to be an extremely strong crowd control tool when it comes to using this talent tree because it's going to be a 90% AoE slow. So you'll be able to put this on top of a team of three people that you've gripped in and slow them by a huge amount. And since you have two death and decays, you can do this very often. Alrighty guys, if you enjoyed this guide and had any questions, I stream over on twitch.tv slash jokes tv daily from 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern. If this guide helped you in any way, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe. It helps greatly. I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you over on Twitch.